Okay, Joe Omani here, Professor of Consulting. Um, here we have a, uh, a growth curve of a uh, management consultancy that's been growing for 20 odd years. Um, and I'd like you to think about whether if you were a buyer, whether or not you would buy this firm. But I'd also like you to think about what perhaps you learned in business school about S-curves. Um, and S-curves are taught pretty much in all business curves, where uh, all business schools, sorry, where you have an accelerated form of growth and then you have a plateauing out as you experience challenges. Typically, due to that form of government th governance that you have, then you implement a new form of governance and then you have an accelerated form of growth and then it plateaus out again. So that's how this type of stuff is uh, taught. Now, I was very lucky the other week to have a uh, CEO of a fantastic consultancy share their growth story with me and I think this I'm sharing this because with his permission um, because I think it's it will be useful to many people and reassuring to many people to see this so the first thing I would say is that these aren't traditional S curves and in my research on consultancy over the last 20 years or so I've seen very little evidence of the <clears throat> traditional form of S curves that are taught about business schools where there are natural boundaries to growth um, what tends to happen is that life gets in the way. And when I say life, I guess I mean here, first of all, we have um, the financial collapse, 2008 to 2010, um, which hit most consultancies in some way. Then secondly, we have, if you look at this um, period here, certainly if you're a UK consultancy, we have Brexit. And then finally, over the last few years, We've had COVID. Now, if you, unless you've been very lucky as a consultancy, these three things will have hit you. Um, and some consultancies accelerated their growth because they happened to be in the right area. It wasn't great strategy. It was just great luck. Um, so the first thing I would say is that um, with S-curve theory, I don't think it's worth the paper it's written on, to be honest. there's very. I've looked into it. There's virtually no evidence that it's all theory. There's virtually no evidence of it occurring. Um, and that when S-curves do happen, when, you know, plateauing or inflection points do happen, it's usually because of some type of disaster. Now, these are macro level disasters, um, but actually it could be a major client pulling out. It could be a, uh, founders disagreeing and go agreeing to go their separate ways, or it might be a big rainmaker leaving the organisation for someone else. And to some extent, you can hedge your bets with those and insure against them. Um, but with these externalities, you really can't. Um, and a lot of how you respond to those is going to be down to a lot of how they affect your firm is going to be down to luck. Um, what you can control is how you respond to them. The second thing I wanted to emphasize, as well as dissing uh, S-curve theory, is really telling your growth story. And this is important for both people who might want to buy your firm, but also for your employees. Um, and I think this is a fantastic example, because what you've got here is really three phases of fantastic growth. You know, the initial phase, the phase after the financial collapse, and the phase um, following COVID. Um, and this is a highly investable company, simply, oh, well, you know, we need to look at other things, etc. But in terms of growth, this is a highly investable company, and a great company, because the things that have hit it, the things that have really limited growth are things out of their control. And this would have occurred to pretty much all consultancies or professional service firms. And buyers know that um, and buyers take that into account. So it's important to tell the story right for buyers, but also for your employees so they don't get unmotivated during these periods. And they should expect, you know, they should expect in a few years time something else to be coming along. Hopefully it won't be another COVID, but, you know, perhaps now we might be entering another period of financial collapse. Um, or something else might happen. Um, but they're to be expected. Now, what's important here is how you respond to these challenges. That's a story for uh, uh, another um, video. Uh, but briefly, what typically happens in consultancies, especially the large ones in these periods, is that they start sacking people. Um, then when growth happens after the period of stagnation or collapse, um, they can't grow fast enough because they don't have the people in place. Now, it was quite interesting in COVID recently, um, where con con the larger consultancies actually learnt their lessons from last time, especially during the financial co co collapse, and actually decided not to sack so many people. There was a bit of trimming, but not, not a vast amount. Um, and a lot of consultancies held on to their talent because they realised that talent now, especially these days, 
is so hard to come by. Um, but also, if you were particularly wise during that period, perhaps you would have taken some of the downtime, some of the drop in utilization rates to set people up on internal projects. And those internal projects should um, look at your resilience, but also look at your overall strategy and how you are preparing for the next phase of growth. Anyway, I thought that might be interesting. Again, I'm incredibly grateful to the CEO who shared this with me. Um, and I'm sure that many of you will find this a familiar story. OK, thanks for your help. Bye bye.